All right, so let's get in right, right into it. I have a few takeaways for you guys from this presentation. First of all, is YouTube really worth it? Is it worth the effort? What's the real reason why many people fail on this platform? And how can you truly leverage this platform in a manageable way to still see results, even with a small audience? And I'm gonna share examples along the way from personal experience with our channel, and also from some of our, our YouTube coaching clients. So let's dive in. So what's the problem with YouTube here? So there are a ton of resources out there, YouTube videos, courses, all this kind of stuff on how to grow a YouTube channel. And the thing is, most of them aren't specifically for people in the education space or authors. They're mainly for people who wanna get those numbers up quick, those views quick, right? And in other words, different ways of going viral and growing an audience fast. But from personal experience, YouTube isn't really like that, especially if you are someone who's wanting to release educational content and position yourself as an expert in your field. That's an entirely different growth strategy on this platform. So the YouTube strategy that you're going to use is, you know, it's going to be totally different from what you're seeing out there. And it it really takes a little bit of, of digging and, and figuring out how to make this platform work for you. You know, there's nothing wrong with wanting to get those views up. There's nothing wrong with wanting to build an audience. Of course, we love that. We want that. But the thing is, when you when you place your focus entirely on that, you're actually missing out on a lot of the foundational stuff that needs to happen first before you can start to see those numbers come up. And this is why people get discouraged a lot of the time. The thing to remember as well is that more views and subscribers do not necessarily equal more money, a successful YouTube channel making a lot of money or revenue. We've seen channels that have less than 3,000 subscribers earning $2,000 a month uh, and we've also seen fairly large channels with over 150,000 subscribers earning less than $400 a month. These are real numbers. So, you know, it doesn't necessarily come down to more views and subs. And it's it's really about content strategy and consistency, despite all of this. Just to give you an example here, this is a case study from one of our clients. They're called Investor Life, and they teach all about real estate investing. This is Tiffany and Corey up here at the top. Their content is actually mostly repurposed from Facebook live streams, which is pretty cool. Um, but we're you know, trying to work with them to get more uh, original content, filmed content whenever they come. They're from Alberta, so whenever they come here, we'll go to Stanley Park, batch film a bunch of videos, for them and then they can release that on their channel she actually tiffany and corey they made a, they have a course on real estate investing and they actually made uh, this was a mentorship program course it's ten thousand dollars and they made that sale from a youtube video with less than a thousand subscribers they had on this channel at that time and the kicker is less than a hundred views on that video Again, doesn't come down to those numbers of views and subs necessarily. How did this happen? It's, you know, it's because everything worked together in this video. You know, from what she was saying in the video, she was teaching a certain concept on real estate investing. Um, and that in turn attracted the type of audience, the type of the, that target client that would be perfect for the mentorship program. And of course, giving a ton of you, uh, a ton of value in that video and just giving a soft call to action at the end, letting people know that they have a mentorship program if they're interested, not even hard selling, not promoting, none of that stuff. Just to give you an example, this is uh, totally doable. And you'll notice, um, this is our YouTube channel here. You'll start to notice when I'm doing this presentation here, we, we talk about YouTube a little bit differently than um, a lot of how most people talk about YouTube we specialize really in helping people create a successful, sustainable how-to channel, educational channel, because that's the way we've been personally doing YouTube for over eight years now. Our YouTube channel, Esatino Media here, officially launched in 2015. 
uh, just to give you a bit of background. And we started releasing tutorials, you know, um, everything that we were learning on social media marketing, we would release those in the form of tutorials, you know, anything to do with content creation, that kind of thing. And this is a highly competitive niche, like even at the time, it's even more competitive now. But, you know, at the time, um, social media tutorials were, ev were everywhere, you know, it, everyone wants to be a social media expert nowadays. So, but we didn't care. Like we were just so passionate about this topic and we were so passionate about living your life on your terms and helping people truly see that you can make money doing what you love. Because quick side note, I was supposed to be a doctor. I actually took the MCAT twice before being on this path. And like, that's not, I, I really discovered that's not really what I wanted to do. I, I'm a multi-passionate creative, you know, I love singing, I love design, I love writing, all of these things. And so I embarked on this personal growth journey uh, alongside my best friend from high school, Jewel here, who same kind of say, similar story, like she's supposed to be this Filipino nurse, right? The, the stereotype and, and that kind of thing. So we just really, you know, learned and absorbed everything we could about design and, you know, um, and websites and messaging and marketing, because that's something that we're truly passionate about. With all of this stuff, um, you know, we started offering services to other people who were asking us about what we were doing. And I even used this knowledge to launch a, one of my dreams was to launch a music career. And I ended up doing that, releasing several albums, going on tour. You know, this just was hand in hand with growing this business into what it is today. Because I, I truly believe that every single person has something meaningful to share. And there is absolutely a, someone out there, an audience for you that needs to hear the message that you want to deliver, that you want to share. So through doing this YouTube, you know, and, and other things that we do as well, we, we want more people to share their message, more people to share what they have to offer. So this passion just pulled us through everything, despite the competition on YouTube and all this kind of stuff. And we had a publishing schedule as well. At the time, it was three videos a week. Um, we just stuck to that publishing schedule. And three years later, I was able to quit my, my job um, and just go full time into this business because we had sustainable revenue coming in from ad revenue and clients and, and that sort of thing just from these videos. I actually just I recently read the book, The Compound Effect. And I didn't know it at the time, but every single video that we were releasing on this channel was truly like contributing to that compound effect, those little small actions over and over again, stacked over time to build this asset. Like our channel has truly become an asset and it can do the same thing for you. Here's a little uh, snapshot. I just took this um, this morning. This is from the back end of our channel, just showing you a little bit of our analytics. This is for September. Um, our channel earns anywhere between two to 3,500 a month. Um, this is US here, so even better for us in Canada. <laughs> you know, this is just the ad revenue. So this isn't factoring in the services and the course sales. And, you know, for you, it could be book sales, all this, uh, your products and services that you're selling on the side. To qualify for earning this ad revenue, you do need at least 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours to start earning from these ads. It's it's If you want to start earning from the, um, there's like different donation features like super thanks, super chats, those are other little ways of, of getting donations from your viewers when they like your content. You only need 500 subscribers for that and 3,000 watch hours. But this ad revenue here, um, you do need to meet those requirements. But we always say, you know, don't wait till you have those, the, till you have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours because you can absolutely create relationships with your viewers at any point with one subscriber because your views can actually come from non-subscribers. They don't only come from people who are subscribed to your channel. So that's something to keep in mind as well. All you need to do is focus on creating good quality content. So what does that mean? Good quality content, right? So that term is used so much, you know, create valuable content. What does that really mean? So this is how you leverage 
a small audience, even if you haven't reached the monetization requirements to earn ad revenue. And um, we call it triple threat content, which basically means you are creating a video that is attracting the right viewer, the type of person you want to attract. It engages the viewer because you're you're providing, whether you're teaching something or it's entertaining or it's inspiring or motivating in some shape or form. And then you are giving them some form of a call to action as well. You know, to give you an example, one service that we provide in addition to YouTube coaching is uh, we help people set up courses online. So uh, if you want to launch an online course, we're the, the ones to help you build the infrastructure and the tech for that, the platform, all that kind of stuff. So one of the pieces of content that I release on the channel is, um, is to do with a platform called Learn Worlds. And Learn Worlds is a learning management system. It's a platform that allows you to release uh, courses on here. So I I love that platform. I believe in it. I think it's great. So I release different videos on that, you know, comparing it to other course platforms and, um, you know, maybe talking about whether it's a good platform for live cohort courses and or self-paced courses. There, I mean, you could dive in really deep in, in any particular topic. And from those videos, you know, it's attracting the right viewer because whoever is searching for uh, some a video on Learn Worlds, they're interested in creating a course. They're looking into creating a course, right? So it's attracting that viewer. It's engaging the viewer because it's answering a question that they have. So, and sometimes I'll, you know, I'll um, modify the title of the video to, to be a question, um, or it'll be like, how to do this, meaning they've, they were typing in themselves how to put up a course on Learn Worlds, let's say. So it's engaging the viewer. And it's giving them a call to action. And I don't, you know, it's not like a hard sell or anything, but at the end, after I've given all that value, I'll say at the end, by the way, we do help people launch their courses online on Learn Worlds. And if you need some extra help, uh, hit the link in the description below, and I'd be happy to set up a discovery call with you. And that's it. And that's the end of the video. So it touches upon all three of these elements. Just to give you another example as well, uh, from an author standpoint, yes, I see Melody clapping. <laughs> uh, I'm so proud of Brenda, so, so proud. She specializes in writing memoirs and she's written a memoir of her own as well. So all of the content that she releases on her channel is, you know, around how to write a memoir and so many different angles and ways of creating content that I didn't even know existed, like how to write your premise and um, why write a memoir and um, how to structure a memoir, all this kind of stuff. She talks about her book every so often, but not, e not even like uh, directly in these videos. She'll just include a link in the description of her video. Um, she also offers consulting and she, this, is it this year or the end of last year? Uh, Timeline wise, I'm kind of off here, but it, she actually just recently, we started working together on helping her launch her first course. And she she recently just launched it um, this past summer. So she has all of these things in place. And then with each of these videos, she's attracting that person who would need extra help to, you know, write the memoir, whatever, whatever that looks like for them. When you do this, every single video is out there working for you 24 seven. I like to think of each video as like your own sales and marketing person out there. Um, and each video, even though it's teaching, it's not directly selling, but it is kind of, it's pre-selling um, your viewers on on you, your brand, you know, it's giving them a feel for, for what you're like to work with you. And also just, you know, giving people an idea of the value of your content before actually taking that action step to work with you or to buy something from you. You know, the cool thing here too is that um, each video has the potential to earn for years to come because your your videos have a longer shelf life than let's say Instagram or Facebook. You know, as soon as you release a video on, on those platforms, it, it's easy to just kind of miss it in the feed. Whereas YouTube is a search engine, you know, someone's typing something into the search and 
your video has, you know, good authority power in the algorithm, it will pop up and people will discover it. I mean, we still have people commenting and, you know, clicking on our videos from 2016 saying that they're they're still helpful and they they still earn us ad revenue to this day as well. So that's another great thing is it has a longer shelf life. You can see this, like the stacking, you know, when you're doing this over and over again, every single video, attracting the right viewer, engaging your viewer, call to action over and over again. When you release this on your channel, what happens is that you start to build authority, build credibility. You start to generate leads as well and revenue. If you have those things set up, like let's say, for example, if you're leading people towards opting in for a free guide or something. Uh, in uh, or in your email list, you know, and we and we have that happen all the time, on like daily, sometimes, definitely weekly, several times a week. People land in our inbox because they said, "I saw this video of so and so, and you know, I was wondering if you could help me with this." Uh, your channel, in a sense, becomes this marketing and sales machine for you. And, you know, it builds authority in your niche and naturally sends traffic to your website um, where they can possibly book a call with you or check out your book or whatever it is that you're selling, even with a small number of followers. For those of you who have uh, YouTube channels and see a small number of views or subscribers, I, I know it's hard, but don't get discouraged because it's it's all about the quality of the viewers that you attract to these videos. It's not necessarily just quantity. Um, so really focus on creating good quality content like this that attracts the right viewer, engages a viewer, call to action, all that sort of thing. And if And if you combine this with staying consistent, then you will see results. All right, so I see... Uh, Leah asking, any thoughts about audio only videos on YouTube, which I've heard some people use as part of their podcasting strategy? Yes. So I actually just did a video on this um, on the channel talking about can you can you be successful with a faceless channel? Is that what you're asking, Leah? Like you're, you're not necessarily on camera? It's just like in addition, almost like, is it worth it to also do that if I had that kind of content to add in? I don't think I would do that only but I am okay. definitely interested in podcasting. And I yes. I guess I've heard that people are using YouTube sometimes and they don't want to be watching the video. They're yeah. actually putting YouTube on their headphones and using it like an audio player. So I was just curious, anything on that? A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, YouTube is still the place to go for long form video content. Like just like you said, people just even our um, our live streams, um, they're between an hour and an hour and a half on different topics. And um, we get people all the time just saying like they're washing the dishes, just putting us in their earbuds or they're like and they're in a car or something like that. And um, so whether you're on camera or not, I think people do that. You know, people people will use your your content um, like podcasts if it's a longer form and. I mean, that kind of ties into repurposing as well. You know, I know a lot of people who they'll they'll film themselves, whether it's an interview or a, just a longer video, they'll release that on the channel. They'll strip the audio and release it as, you know, a podcast episode. So there's different ways to to kind of tap into that audio only piece as well. Answered question, Leah? Just want to make sure. Yes. OK. Yeah, definitely. Thanks. Great. Right, you're welcome. Uh, Meg says, sounds like how to videos work best. I offer writing prompts on my channel, mostly for my existing clients. Any thoughts on promoting that type of video? Can you explain a little bit to me on the writing prompts? What that looks like, Meg? Yeah. Um, and thanks so much for this presentation. Um, okay. I So I'm in the process of creating a tarot deck with my husband and we have these little YouTube videos where it shows a tarot card and writing prompts based on that tarot card. So there's, there's kind of multiple purposes that it can serve. Um, but as far as for writers, it's kind of, it leads writers through a little 10 minute process of kind of a guided writing experience. Okay. Isn't, isn't that in a sense also kind of teaching them or 
Uh, so, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> How like, you, right? Yeah, it is Whoa. kind of like um, a, a teaching exercise, but mm. it's actually more practical than just absorbing knowledge from a video, right? So mm -hmm. that's even better that you have that. Yeah. Okay. But if you can so find can you, like get ways, writing done. Yeah, exactly. If you, I was just going to say, if you can find different ways of positioning the way that you title that content or present the content. Um, you know, it, it could, that, that could work to your favor as well. Think of what someone would type into the search engine to want to have this video pop up and then, you know, brainstorm ideas for that from there. Thank you for your perspective. Yeah, no problem. Uh, clarifying on call to action, do you advise keeping them evergreen rather than time-based? So with us, you know, if we have a certain promotion that we're doing, we may release a specific video just on that, um, saying, you know, giving people a, a time-based call to action, essentially. But if it's, you know, through these tutorials or how-tos or you're teaching on certain concepts or even sharing a story, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be because that's also um, educational or you want someone to get something out of it in some way when you're sharing a story. Uh, so with those, the call to actions at the end for us are typically evergreen. So whether it's to opt in for our newsletter or email list or to check out a specific product or service that's related to what we just taught on and talked about. Love the questions. Jocelyn, is there a length of video we're talking about for how to how to content that works best? Nope, not at all. Uh, so Whatever time you need to teach on a topic without fluffing, without, you know, wasting someone's time um, and, you know, but still providing a, a ton of value, that's the perfect time that the video should be, you know, doesn't have to be bite sized, doesn't have to be really long. I mean, we've we've had um, a very successful video. It was um, an Etsy video. So we talked about because we were selling on Etsy at one point. And we we're talking about the cost of selling on Etsy. And this was like, it took, it legit took 30 minutes to explain the cost of selling on Etsy because of all of the fees and everything. And you wouldn't believe like that's, that video went viral in, on, in a sense that educational content can, um, and people really appreciated it. So even though 30 minutes, it's still gave a ton of value. I tend towards the much smaller bite-sized information. So I guess my, I guess my oh, question yeah. would then be, can it be too short? Do, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, if you're answering the question straight to the point and that's the answer and it took one minute, two minutes, whatever, then perfect. That's, perfect. That's it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. What are your thoughts about sharing content on YouTube for free that is also included in paid courses? Yes, juicy. Um, so yeah, I get that question all the time. Like how much should I share for free versus paid in the courses? And you, you of course don't want to release like all of your, your paid content in the form of YouTube videos, but you want to think about whatever your paid product is, it would be good to think about, again, what what questions, what are frequently asked questions that people have around this topic and create content around that. You can also take some videos from, let's say if it's an online course, you can take like your best videos from, you know, section one of your course or section two or three and release those. So you can use your video, your pieces of content to release for free as teasers. So, you know, after they've watched it, you would of course say, you know, if you've enjoyed this, we have a full, whatever it is, four hour course um, with lots more on X, Y, Z, check it out in the description below. So a little bit of both. And I, I say best videos on purpose because I know people don't, they want to hold their best stuff but you know, it's not, you're not giving everything away. It's just one little piece of it, but that one piece, if it is your best stuff is going to truly help people see the value in the paid product. Um, and then also create content, other content um, that's not in the course, thinking of more along the lines of the FAQs and, and uh, what videos would attract the right viewers for that type of course. All right. So how, 
how do people find my videos? So we talked about content, uh, quality content. How do people actually find my videos? There's, and I get this a lot as well. There's so many videos out there on my topic. So how do people discover it? And uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about competition because because I, I find a lot of people feel that YouTube is saturated nowadays, and that's the main reason for them not even trying. Keep in mind, you really can't talk about anything new these days. Like there's, there are a ton of people talking about social media, a ton of people talking about tarot cards as well, Meg. There's a ton of people talking about fitness, like any any of the topics that you that you guys are, whatever space you're in. Uh, there's a ton of channels out there on every single topic. That doesn't mean that it, it's already been done because the way that you describe things, you know, your your energy, the, the way you explain things, your likeness, your style, your personality, all this kind of stuff will make someone want to choose your video over this person here, even though this person here is super popular in the space, even though they they have all of the numbers and stuff and they are creating a video on the exact same topic as you. Because, I mean, think about yourself as well, right? You, uh, I don't know if you guys watch videos on YouTube, whether it's YouTube or not, you know, you gravitate towards listening to certain people, uh, even though other people are also talking about those topics. It's because you are authentically you, right? And um, you're already offering something different in the market just by being yourself in that video and explaining things or, or teaching things or inspiring things what, in the way that you do. So I want you to keep that in mind. And the whole game is getting in the game. If you don't get in the game, if you don't release your first video, your second video, etc., you have already let your competition win. So, you know, um, don't let that stop you. So let's go back to the question. How do we get traffic to our videos? Uh, personally, this is the number one method that we use is just getting organic traffic to our channel by ranking our videos for the search engines. So we optimize our videos for search. In other words, that means, you know, we'll, we'll spend a bit more extra time figuring out the title, description, tags, all that kind of stuff to help let YouTube's algorithm know that, you know, this is a video on this topic. If someone's typing in something similar, you know, this is a good match. And you, that's what you're doing. You're helping, you're helping YouTube's algorithm deliver content to those viewers who are looking for it. So, you know, you don't need to spend um, money on paid advertising unless you want to. We rarely do, which is different from Facebook where you have to like boost every single post for, for visibility. So, you know, optimizing our videos for the search engines is, is it works well for us because YouTube is like a cert, like a, like a how to kind of, it works very well for how to people go to YouTube to learn how to do things or to find out more on a certain topic or to listen to stories and hear ex about experiences that people want to know more about. So that works really well when you're optimizing for search. And when you do, you, you can show up on the first page of not only YouTube search engine, but also Google as well, because the, those go hand in hand. Google will bring up videos from the YouTube platform when people are typing into their search. So over 80% of the traffic that comes to our channel um, is all from just ranking our videos in the, the YouTube and Google search. This allows us to grow consistently at about 180,000 views per month, um, which is unreal. Like it, those numbers still are like, wow, to me, it's amazing. Um, this is a screenshot as well from, from today. So I just pulled up the last 90 days that you could see here. Um, and ranking your videos on the search engines isn't like, it's not as hard as it sounds. We actually teach a five-step method that takes less than 10 minutes per video once you really get the hang of it. Of course, it'll take a little bit longer to, to learn in the beginning. You don't have to be technologically savvy or understand search engine optimization or 
or any of that kind of stuff. It basically just shows you how to properly come up with the title, the tags, the description, how to how to signal to YouTube's algorithm that this is a video you want to bring up when someone searches for this topic. Uh, we've taught this SEO method to um, thousands of people and our students who have never ever heard about SEO to begin with, like Roland here, I just wanted to share this story. Roland's a retired outdoorsman, I guess you could call him, and a handyman from, from Ontario. Uh, didn't know anything about ranking YouTube videos until he took this course and he learned the five-step method. Actually, he told me he watched <laughs> he watched the course several times, which is amazing, um, and applied it and applied the SEO method. He went from zero to 6,000 subscribers on one of his channels. It actually and earned you know over $2,000 a month, which inspired him to create another YouTube channel um, specifically on a certain topic. I just want to say it's not rocket science um, and, and you can you can figure it out too. There are, I just want to point out as well, there are other traffic strategies that people use and teach and that sort of thing. But we love optimizing our videos for search because it's it specifically works well, like I said, for educational how-to channels um, because it helps YouTube serve the right videos to their viewers. And YouTube loves that, that when you can help their algorithm do that. Uh, and also it consistently attracts new and targeted views. So new views, because it's always, you know, people are searching for those topics all the time. In fact, most of our uh, views come from non-subscribers on the channel. So you always have a new set of people watching your videos. And again, it, because, if, because you are doing topics that are going to attract that right person, that, that, um, that targeted audience member, then they will be targeted views from people who eventually turn into buyers or fans of your work. And you do this once on each video and then YouTube does the rest. You just release it and then you see what the algorithm does and some, and it changes all the time. You'll, you'll sometimes have the video rank right away on the first page and then it doesn't anymore and it goes away. People discover it in other ways. Um, or you'll have a video that didn't rank at all to begin with, but all of a sudden it does show up and it ranks uh, on the first page of Google. There's many different ways in terms of how that works. You know, when it's ranking, of course, people want you want um, people to engage with the video because that helps YouTube even push the video further and that sort of thing. But it all starts with just the simple five-step SEO method. What does success on YouTube for authors really boil down to. Actually, before I, I share that, um, I'll just share an example. I, sh I shared the Learn Worlds example with you, but we have several people who also land on our, we have another type of tutorial called Camtasia tutorials. And these are video editing tutorials that uh, Jewel creates and releases on the channel because that's part of creating profitable content and content creation. and we create those videos because we have a course on Camtasia video editing. It, it's quite often where people will watch these tutorials, they'll get so much value from it, and they'll go and purchase the course that we have associated with it. They'll get one-on-one -on -one Camtasia help if they're working on a certain project and want Jules' help for that. Then they'll turn into YouTube coaching clients because they're editing videos for their channel or they're editing videos for their website, that kind of thing. And they want to learn more now about YouTube. Um, and then that in itself will turn into like a website design or graphic design client because now they want a funnel or a landing page to sell their courses. And so you see how just like a simple video editing tutorial can, if that's attracting the right viewer, it really can turn into a loyal customer, a, re a repeat client. So I want you to think, really think about that question of what types of topics can I talk about? Can I release on the channel that would attract the person I want to work with that would make sense for them to come into my business and my space? And I have all of these, you know, these different offers for them, you know, these different um, digital products or physical products or services. Um, because you really can turn those viewers into high quality clients and steady monthly income. 
So despite the saturation in your niche, you don't need to go viral or have a big audience. I'm just summarizing here to start seeing to start seeing success from your channel, to start earning a decent monthly income, you can do this regardless of how competitive your, your niche is uh, and with a small audience. But look, I know I'll have a lot of people saying, but Ari, look, it's, it's so intimidating to start and grow a YouTube channel, right? You gotta spend time planning your videos, I got to figure out what gear to use and how to set it up so I can actually look good on camera. Um, I have to figure out, you know, I have to work up the courage to actually get on camera. I have to figure out how to design these catchy thumbnails, um, figure out what what attention grabbing titles to come up with for my videos. And I get it. I really do. I get it that you pour your heart and soul into creating these videos and you're excited slash nervous to release them on the channel. And then you go back and you look at the view count and then all that effort to be met with low views, right? It, it's, it can be really discouraging. So what, what is the real reason why so many people fail with YouTube? If, you know, we've touched upon, it's not the competition, it's not, you know, like, you, having the perfect video production set up and all, all this kind of stuff. What What's really going on here? And put it, feel free to put it in the, the chat as well. Um, any guesses on what's the real reason why you feel most people don't go all the way with YouTube or they fail, that their channel just ends up being left in cyberspace. I'm just curious to know your answers. There's actually two that I want to share with you, the top two reasons. What it boils down to is the two things. Number one, not having the right strategy in place. First of all, that's the step before the consistency, not having the right strategy in place, one that delivers results, essentially, one that delivers um, valuable and helpful content to your viewers uh, and in turn gets you leads or sales. So, and I get it, there's just so much information overload out there. Uh, people don't really know what to focus on, right? And it, there's because there's so many different things going on with you, a YouTube channel, they end up doing all of these different things and not really focusing on the foundations and, and having a strategy in place with those foundations, which I'll share what those are um, in a few seconds here. But this is resonating with you if you're doing this. It, it's not your fault. Uh, there's there's all these YouTube videos and courses out there that uh, they essentially sell you the dream of building up this massive audience uh, in a short period of time. And I can tell you firsthand, it it can it can end up like that. It can it has happened for people, but that's not necessarily the case. Um, and they you know they paint a picture of hundreds of thousands of views and subscribers because that's what people want to hear and it's what sells. But teaching you these strategies for getting lots of views in a short period of time can be really discouraging. And yes, they give up. They, you give up, right? Um, story of my life. <laughs> exactly, right? And it's not, it's not sustainable. It, it's this stressful way of doing YouTube is not sustainable, um, which leads to number two. Right. The second people why people fail is consistency. Like you said, Melody, it's not having a system in place for staying consistent with your content strategy and um, sticking to your publishing schedule. Right. And the combination of these two things, you know, not not having a strategy or maybe using the wrong strategy, plus not having a system in place you know, in turn leads to like not seeing results. And on top of everything you have, this is just YouTube. You have your other life and business obligations as well. Um, YouTube, it's, it's so easy to see that YouTube can just become super overwhelming and, um, and people quit, people give up. Like you guys said, how do we fix this? What, what, what does success, um, what does success on YouTube really boil down to. And I mentioned the foundations and I want to share those with you because it took, it, it, it may look simple on paper, but if you think about all of the things involved, 
with a YouTube channel, it's um, this is really all it boils down to. I've simplified YouTube into these four areas of focus for you, starting from the bottom and working your way up to the top here. So number one, focus on creating profitable content, which we talked a little bit about earlier in this presentation. Number two, then focus on creating a system for staying consistent, for systemizing the release of this content that you're putting your, your time and effort into. Number three, then focus on getting traffic to the channel. Again, we use the search engine, the, the SEO, five-step SEO method um, for getting found in the search engines, but you could use other, other ways as well. And then, you know, you focus on setting up your channel to earn from these multiple revenue streams here. So I specifically say in this order because the foundational steps below each pillar here need to be set first and need to be addressed before you can get to the top. And, you know, to give you an example, it would be a waste of time, in, in my opinion, it, you, to to focus on creating really beautiful thumbnails and have them be perfect and attention grabbing and everything. If you haven't really focused on creating content, like you haven't released your first video, or if you haven't found a way of staying consistent, because that, that thumbnail piece lives in get traffic. So that's what, you know, when your video pops up in the search engine, people see that thumbnail and they click on it to get to the video. So that kind of lives in this top pillar here. Another example as well, people, you know, will sometimes focus all this, this energy into making money from their channel um, and really diving deep into that, again, without having released their first video on the channel, having mastered creating a video. I see this all the time. You'd be, you'd be surprised, you know, it might sound, um, it might sound, you know, common sense to do things this way, but Again, it's because there's just so much information out there. We see a video, we're like, oh, we're supposed to do that. We're supposed to do great thumbnails right now, like even though there's like no videos on the channel. So, you know, just, just keep the, this in mind. Most people want to skip to the top. And if you really are wanting to create a sustainable sales and marketing system out of your YouTube channel that goes to your business and brings you leads and revenue, you know, you want to you want to follow this this order here, because when you focus on each of these areas, your channel will be built on a solid foundation. Um, you will help make a greater impact in the lives of other people. You you know, it will in turn help build your email list. It will in turn increase bookings on your calendar. And I'm sharing all of this with you, not based on theory, but real results experience. Um, so, and not just that, like the results aren't just monetary as well. You'll receive some really cool opportunities out of you just putting yourself out on video. Speaking gigs, you know, people will want, want to interview you or hire you to speak at their, um, at their events. Uh, brands may reach out to you as well and want you to sponsor their product or service. You know, some other really cool things that you never would have imagined will, will pop out of out of uh, a YouTube channel, which is amazing. And all of this, it's doable. It's manageable. It's just about figuring out what those habits are that you need to create and then just, you know, sticking to them, doing them over and over again. And if you if you fall short uh, one day or one week, it's totally fine. What matters is just you getting back up. Again, just keep getting back up. Um, just don't quit the game. And uh, as long as you know what to focus on like this here, it'll it'll happen for you. And even with a business as well, like for us, um, creating and selling courses, we do consulting, we uh, manage a small team, we're posting on social media. You know, we, we still manage out of all of this stuff. Um, to release three to four videos a week on the channel. And we also do a bi-weekly live stream. It was weekly, but we just turned in, into bi-weekly now. You know, that's not to say that you have to release that many pieces of content on your channel. That's totally, that's not what it means. It's just, I just want to show you that we're, we're not superhuman. It's just out of having a system in place, you know, 
I, I have set days in my calendar where I'll film, um, set days in my calendar where Jewel will dedicate to edit, uh, editing the videos um, and releasing them on the channel. So a system will you know, cut through all the noise of what you don't need to do so that you can efficiently focus and manage your time on things that you do need to do and still grow other parts of your business at the same time. And in fact, because you're authors as well, you kind of, you, you already have content, you're at an advantage, you know, if you, you're, you can take your, your book and turn that into content as YouTube videos, you know, you, those scripts, so to speak, are already kind of done for you, the content is there. We're all about building a long term asset out of your YouTube channel, not just chasing quick hits of, of views and subscribers here, um, because we really want to lay a foundation, this foundation of what's going to generate more growth in the years to come so that you can have a channel that fulfills you creatively and earns you a healthy income along the way and impacts people as well. How do we know what profitable content is? How do we test for this? It just comes down to like the results that you're getting from the video. And we don't go back to every single one of our videos and be like, okay, how many leads did we get from this? How many, you know, like what were the sales and the ad revenue from, from this video? If we see certain videos that are doing well and, and meaning they'll pop up in our analytics because they're gaining a lot of ad revenue, we'll do more videos like that on the, on those topics. Or if we have people popping into our inbox saying, I found you from this video, we'll create more videos like that, or just keep those topics in mind or write them down as well. So from there, it's like the feedback that you're getting from your analytics, from people who have found you all this kind of stuff. And then you create more like that because the entire channel as a whole is going to build your authority on YouTube in the algorithm. Because if YouTube sees that you're creating more and more and more videos on these topics, it'll start to position you as a channel in that, in that niche and serve up your videos to more people. So it's not a black and white answer, like, you know, because we're all about keep going, keep going rather than going backwards and, and trying to see how many specific numbers you can do that. I know people who do that, but how do you go about implementing this? I encourage you to start at the bottom here, you know, focus on creating that triple threat content that we talked about, focus on those FAQs, you know, what would people ask? What would people, what would people search in the search engines that would make sense for me to, um, to promote these products and services indirectly even. And if you already have the hang of that, your next step is getting a system down for staying consistent because you can schedule your videos on YouTube. So, um, and Melody is a great example of this because after, you know, we did YouTube coaching with Melody and after teaching this whole system, um, she took that and ran and she, you know, I think you had six months scheduled out of YouTube video content, something. Three something years. Months. Three years, did you say? Three usually, three usually, three months usually. Oh, three months. Okay. I was like, wow. Three months. That's amazing. That's, that's incredible. And you can, you know, you can set yourself up that way. You can have seasons of creating content and, uh, and scheduling it. And then, you know, that frees you up for the rest of the year so that you're not always scrambling last minute to release a video on the channel. And if you'd like some extra guidance, you know, of course, uh, with any of these things, or, you know, you want to know the systems that we use, um, you want to borrow our system, then we do have a program called the Profitable Channel. And um, I'll just take a couple minutes here just to tell, tell you a little bit about it for those of you who are interested. This is years of tried, tested, and proven frameworks that we've implemented, that we've implemented ourselves, but also for our coaching clients. And this course is this program is really designed to help you do YouTube in a time efficient way because uh, our audience is busy professionals essentially um, busy professionals who are experts in their niche in their field they have they want to teach on a certain topic um, but they just have a lot of other stuff going on as well so uh, we walk you through a step-by-step -step how to set up your channel optimize the channel what 
content to create and systemize each of these four areas that we talked about in this little diagram, this little house here, uh, regardless of your niche uh, or what experience level you're coming at. I'll just walk you through each of those sections really quickly. In this in this system, it's it's really about how to grow a profitable YouTube channel with less hassle than scrambling, trying to figure everything out all at once. Um, we really want to help you build a channel where your audience will essentially love you. They'll become fans of you. They want to hear more from you. Just want to preface this by saying it's not just another course on how to be successful with YouTube. It's really our, our proven system that shows you how to build these reliable income streams. So it'll help you grow your business. All right. Um, and each of these, so it's broken into four stages. There's four stages of this course, and it's a, a pre-recorded course video training. Each stage includes uh, handouts, action steps. And in stage one, you'll learn what a profitable content strategy looks like for your specific channel and what types of videos to create as well for your specific niche. Ones that will get you credibility, they'll earn trust from your viewers, and, um, and ultimately lead to those call to actions, lead to people actually booking uh, booking into your calendar or purchasing something from you. So we also, here's just a few bullet points as well, um, help you with different filming setups, depending on what types of videos you're creating. We have a complete gear list in here as well. If you have, if you don't have any videos on your channel, you're just starting out. We also have outlines, 12 different video ideas, but each comes with certain outlines. So you could go and script those in your own way. The second stage of the course is the staying consistent piece. So you'll learn how to manage your time efficiently and systemize your video content to stay consistent with releasing videos on the channel. Um, and this is the, the system that we taught to Melody as well. Um, one that you can realistically keep up with. You know, you, you, you're going to be able to cater this to your schedule. It's not like a one size fits all type of thing. So um, Another thing as well we talk about is focus, should you focus on quality or quantity when it comes to video production? Because uh, I know a lot of people ask about that as well. Yeah, Melody, you're on here. <laughs> That's what, see, you get the spotlight. Because yeah, I know why I put this in, because this is staying consistent and you're a perfect example of this. Uh, stage three is getting traffic to your videos. So this is where You'll learn our five-step method for ranking videos in the search engines uh, for organic YouTube growth as well. We also share with you our tool that we use to optimize our videos, to not only optimize our videos for the search engines, but also to, to compete, and I'll use that word, compete, or even outrank your competitors in the search results. Uh, also, we'll show you how to get people clicking on the videos with compelling titles, and thumbnails. We have thumbnail templates as well. Um, and then stage four, the part that we all love making money is where you'll learn over five different ways for monetizing your YouTube channel. And we'll show you exactly how to set up these multiple income streams. Um, because by the end of this course, this is our goal for you is we want you to have at least two to three of these income streams set up. We always talk about not putting all of your eggs in one basket or like only making money through ad revenue or only selling this one course. Um, you know, there's there's different ways that you can monetize. Uh, so we give you our YouTube descriptions, um, templates that you can copy and paste and put your own links in there. Yeah, talking about monetization and how that all works, earning ad revenue from, from YouTube and also the three key elements for turning your viewers into customers. So this is the, the entire, our, I call it the five figure per month framework, because it really, that's what allowed me to quit my job, it allowed me to just, you know, do this full time and be able to share more of this with people. And it's such a blessing. It, it really is. Um, this is our video training, you'll get the video ideas and scripts, the ranking checklist, all this kind of stuff. The, this is the tool, by the way, TubeBuddy, um, that makes it easy to rank your videos. People think that if you can just get TubeBuddy, it'll, your, your videos will rank, but you have to know how to use it. There's a, there's a way to use it, the keyword tool in there. Uh, so we actually created a, 
a partnership with TubeBuddy to offer free and discounted um, membership for this tool. And then, of course, access to our Mastermind group, Facebook, Facebook Mastermind group, where you can always ask us questions and just keep going, get unstuck. Typically, you know, we sell our, our YouTube coaching for uh, $14.95 US, and this is what we teach. Our video course itself is originally $2.97 but I want to offer you guys a discount today um, for 50% off and giving it to you for $147 instead. And to do that, you just need, um, but it's just a matter of putting in this coupon code, author50 at checkout. And, and yeah, so if you're interested with that, you can head over to theprofitablechannel.com. You'll see a check an existing promotion on that page, by the way, that's um. It's a different discount, but I think it's it's priced now at like one ninety seven. We're just testing with that. So all you need to do is um, when you go to the checkout page, you'll see that discount. Just click on the little X and then put in the author fifty coupon instead, so that you can get the better discount, <laughs> the one forty seven discount. So thank you guys so much, um, ladies, gals, so much for your attention today. I'm happy to stick around and answer any other questions. And of course, feel free to email me. Um, my email address is on here. I'll just leave this up for a bit.